They have one that with Exodus 34 it talks about uh, Moses makes new tablets. So the Lord said to Moses, Cut for yourself two tablets of stone like, like the first, and I will write on the tablets the words that were on the on the first tablets, which you which you broke. Be ready by the morning, and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai, and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. No one shall come up with you, and let no one be seen throughout all the mountain. Let no flocks or herds graze opposite that mountain. So Moses cut two tablets of stone like the first, and he rose early in the morning and went up on Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand two tablets of stone. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord of God merciful, which is Jesus, of course, and gracious, slow to anger, and unbounding, and steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who, but who, will, be, but who will by no means clear the guilty and visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the, on, the, on the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. And Moses quickly bowed his head towards the earth and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, please let the Lord go in the midst of, for us, for the self necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. The covenant renewed. And he said, Behold, I am making a covenant for all your people. I will do marvels such as, have, such as have not been created in all the earth or in or in any nation, and all the people among you are. This is and all and all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I, that I will do with you. Observe that I, observe what I command you this day. Behold, I will drive out before you the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Pezzarites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Take care. Lest you make a covenant with the with the inhabitants of the land to which you go, lest it become a snare in your midst. You shall tear down their altars and break their pillars and cut down their ashram, for you shall worship no other god. Now, like I said, on past years that I've made, when you study about uh, about about the little g god, it's talking about the devil, the plural gods, g o d s, talking about demons, and the one true god, the big g god, talking about Jesus Christ. It says, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a, uh, is a jealous God. He's talking about Jesus. Lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. And when they whore after their gods or demons and sacrifice to their gods, and you are invited, you eat of his sacrifice, and you take other daughters for your sons, and their daughters whore after their gods or demons, and make your, and make your sons whore after their gods. You shall not make for yourself any gods of cast metal. You shall keep the feast of eleven bread. Seven days shall eat unleavened bread, as I commanded you at the time appointed in the month of Abib. For in the month uh, Abib you came out from Egypt. All that opened the womb are mine, all your male livestock, the firstborn of cow, sheep, the firstborn of a donkey. You shall redeem with the lamb, or, or if you will not redeem it, you shall break its neck. All the firstborn of your sons you shall redeem, and none shall appear before me empty handed. Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, which is the Sunday, you shall rest. In plowing time and harvest time, or in, it says in, in plowing time and, and in harvest, you shall rest. You shall observe the feast of weeks, the first fruits of wheat harvest, the feast of ingathering at, at the year's end. Three times in the year shall all your males appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel, Jesus. For I will cast out nations before you and enlarge your borders. No one shall shall convert or steal your land when you go up to appear before the, before the Lord your God three times in the year. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with anything leavened, or let the sacrifice of, of the feast of the Passover remain until the morning. The best of the first fruits of your ground you shall bring to the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in his mother's milk. And the Lord said to Moses, Write these words. For in accordance with these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. So he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant and Ten Commandments. It's amazing that um, that God sustained Moses for forty days and forty nights. That for forty days and forty nights, Moses neither ate nor drank. He didn't. 
it's no wonder he didn't die from just from just uh, exhaustion, from dehydration. But God sustained Moses to write down the Ten Commandments. You know, praise God for that. The shining face of Moses. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the skin of his face shone, in there, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called them to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned uh, to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the people of Israel came near, and he commanded them all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. Whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would remove the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the people of Israel what he was commanded, the people of Israel would see the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face was shining, and Moses would put the veil over his face again until he went in to speak with him. So basically what I'm talking about is God's glory has shone upon Moses on Moses by his face. And um, whenever Moses would talk to the people, he had a he had a, he had to have a covering over his face, so so that you know people wouldn't die pretty much from God's glory being put on, you know, from God's glory pretty much um, shining on Moses' face. And whenever Moses went back into the tent, you know, he went back in there to talk to, 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 to talk to God, so God could tell Moses what to tell the Jews. So that's why he wore that veil over his face. So, like I said, God's glory has shone upon Moses' face. So whenever Moses would go outside to speak to the people, he put the veil over his face so that people wouldn't die because of God's glory being put on Moses' face. So it's very interesting there. Anyway, chapter 35 is next. We'll be right back.